Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Funda family. In this video, I will explain transfer function with great clarity. Before I start with my explanation, let me tell you the outlines of this video. In this video, I will discuss about basics, types, properties, advantages and disadvantages of transfer function. So let us start this video with first agenda that is basics of transfer function. First of all, one should know what is transfer function. See, transfer function is a ratio of output divided by input. It gives relationship in between output and input. So, one should know transfer function that gives relationship in between input and output of the system. If we have control system over here, to which input is R of S and output is C of S, then transfer function is C of S divided by R of S. Here, if you carefully observe, see transfer function that is represented in form of S domain. S domain means Laplace domain. So, one should know transfer function that we represent in form of frequency domain. It is a ratio of output to input. It can also be represented by numerator polynomial N of S divided by denominator polynomial D of S. See roots of numerator polynomial that gives you idea about zeros of transfer function and roots of denominator polynomial that gives idea about poles of transfer function, right? So here n of s that is numerator polynomial roots of n of s that gives zeros of the system and d of s that is denominator polynomial roots of d of s that gives poles of the system. And one should know transfer function that we represent in form of frequency domain. There are two ways. One is by having Laplace transform and second one is by having Z transform. See Laplace transform that we use it with continuous time systems and Z transform that we use it with discrete time systems. Right. So transfer function that we represent in frequency domain, Laplace transform or Z transform. Laplace transform is utilized for continuous time system while Z transform that we use it for discrete time systems. It is a ratio of output to input, right? Now I'll explain you different types of transfer function. See basically there are two types of transfer functions, proper transfer function and improper transfer function. That one can identify based on order of numerator polynomial and denominator polynomial. See order of numerator polynomial that gives number of zeros and order of denominator polynomial that gives number of poles. For proper transfer function, poles are greater than zeros. Means if you have higher order with denominator polynomial compared to numerator polynomial, then you have higher number of poles compared to zeros. Means we have a proper transfer function. And as if poles are lower than zeros, means denominator order of polynomial is less than order of numerator polynomial. Then one can say we have improper transfer function, right? So in general, one can say there are two types of transfer function, proper and improper. With proper transfer function, number of poles are higher than number of zeros. And with improper transfer function, number of zeros are higher than number of poles, right? Now let me explain properties of transfer function. See transfer function of the system is a Laplace transform of its impulse response for zero initial condition. You need to understand this. See transfer function is a Laplace transform of impulse response. Impulse response means input is impulse signal and we are taking response at output side, right? So considering zero initial condition, if you give impulse input, then whatever response is coming, that is transfer function, right? Like you see here, we have a control system and we have output C of S, input R of S, right? So transfer function is C of S divided by R of S. Now let us consider your input R of S, that is impulse signal. So in Laplace domain, impulse signal is one, right? So T of S is equals to C of S. What it means? It is impulse response. 
C of S that is impulse response, right? Provided we have a zero initial conditions, right? And always remember this Laplace domain transfer function that we have it for continuous time systems. For discrete time systems, we use Z transform, right? Now I'll discuss about few more basics. See, transfer function can be determined from input output pair by taking a ratio of Laplace output to Laplace input. So if you want to determine transfer function of the system, then by taking a pair of input and output, we can identify transfer function, right? But one should know, see, transfer function that is independent of input, right? Practically, transfer function of control system is fixed. It is not dependent on input, right? But to identify transfer function, you can consider it is impulse response with zero initial condition, right? See, transfer function can be identified for LTI systems only. LTI means linear time invariant system. For non-linear systems, response of the system changes with respect to time. So always remember this. See, transfer function is possible with linear time invariant systems only. With non-linear systems, response of the system changes with respect to time. Right. Poles and zeros of the systems can be identified from transfer function. One should know numerator order that explains number of zeros and denominator order that explains number of poles and roots explains poles and zeros over here. See characteristics and stability of the system can be identified using transfer function. In future coming videos, I'll explain many methods by which one can understand characteristics and stability of the system based on transfer function, right? Now, I'll explain you advantages and disadvantages of transfer function. See, transfer function is a mathematical model which gives gain of the system. Transfer function is a ratio of output to input. What it means? It gives gain of the system, right? And based on transfer function, we can understand gain of the system with respect to frequency, right? See, integral and differential equations are converted into simple algebraic equations. One should know systems are having many complex equations. Those equations may be there in form of integral and differential equations. But in transfer function, we have a frequency domain representation by which we have a normal algebraic equations only. So by equations directly one can understand the nature of the system, characteristics of the system and stability of the systems. Right. So here you don't need to analyze complex integral and differential equations by transfer function. By simple algebraic equations, one can understand nature of the system, right? Any input can be given to system, but output can be determined using transfer function. Output C of S, that is transfer function into input R of S, right? See, transfer function is dependent on system only. It is not dependent on input. That one should know. Transfer function is independent on input. It is only dependent on system, right? See, using transfer function, one can identify poles, zero, stability and characteristics of the system. Now, let us discuss about disadvantages. See, transfer function that is only valid for linear time invariant system. It is not valid for non-linear system. The reason is with non-linear system, transfer function changes with respect to time. Right. See, transfer function doesn't account for initial conditions. So as and when you calculate transfer function, at the time we need to consider zero initial condition. It does not account for initial condition. We need to consider zero initial condition, right? See transfer function that doesn't give idea about how present output is progressing. So transfer function is not giving idea about how present output is progressing. It is giving relation in between input and output, right? It doesn't give idea about how output is progressing. I hope now you are having fair enough idea about how one can utilize transfer function for any control system. In future coming videos, I'll explain you how to derive transfer function with different mathematical modelings. Thank you so much for watching this video.